Hello and welcome crafty cuties. I'm really excited for today's video because this video inspired me to grab some things from my craft room that I haven't used in a long time. And if you're here, I'm guessing you are in the same boat as me. And we are going to be talking about embossing folders today, specifically in the junk journaling world. Um, and thanks to Elizabeth, one of my patrons who actually requested this video. She had a few requests, but um, when I was kind of brainstorming, I thought this was a really good one because a lot of us are stuck in our houses right now and we have extra time and we have no time to be going out shopping. And so I thought what better way to hopefully inspire you guys to reach into your craft area and grab out your die cutting machine and some embossing folders that you've probably had sitting around for a very long time. So the main project that we're going to make today is going to actually be this super cute little, um, this isn't complete, but um, it's the cover to a faux leather embossed um, journal that we're going to make. And I thought this was a great idea maybe for Mother's Day. Um, but on top of that, we're going to go over a few different ways and show you a few different things that I like to make. Um, this is just one simple way that you can use your embossing folders and that is just by making a tag. I think they just look so pretty inside of a journal and you could cover this with lined paper if you want to have room for, um, you know, for journaling. And I actually use this metallic gliding guilt sorry gilding polish but use what you have because you can you you could surprise yourself if you have any types of paints especially more metallic paints um you can use that just as you would a gilding polish and just lightly rub over the area but like i said we're actually going to get into this and do a couple projects so i wanted to show you really quick this is one brand that I absolutely love their embossing folders. This is the same one and it's my favorite, but it's by Park Lane and it's from Joann's. And these are, I don't know, they're really inexpensive. I, I swear I got these for like four bucks on sale, but nonetheless, um, I also have a We Are Memory Keepers that I'm gonna um, pull out and use. And this is like a super 3D one. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start with our first project. Really quick, I did want to mention too, if you're new and you are not subscribed, but you keep watching my videos, I hope that you will subscribe because I am starting to upload more regularly and I would just love to have you a part of our little team. Um, yeah, so please do. Um, today, we're going to get started with this 3D um, embossing folder. It's really cool. I'm going to use some uh, vellum paper and we're gonna go ahead and just stick it in now i'm gonna be honest with you guys my die cutting machine is super duper old and like these are a mess but it still works we're gonna go ahead and just set this up i'm gonna run this through and then also don't forget that we're going to make our main project which is going to be the journal we're gonna get into that after we do a couple just simple projects but i wanted to show you just a couple really simple ways that you can use your um, embossing folders. That's right. This one is super thick and I always forget. Okay. So for this vellum, I'm going to use some of my Distress Ox Oxide inks. You can use whatever type of ink you have. Um, and if you don't have inks, again, you can use your imagination and use something like a paint or something like that. So I'm just going to dip into my broken china color here and I'm just going to simply start going over the area and I'm going to try to show you how much dimension this one has but we're going to use this as a pocket I think. Um, I have a lot of different ideas for how you can use your embossing folders and projects but I kind of wanted to keep these a little bit more simple since the journal is going to be a more in-depth um, kind of tutorial but we're gonna just go ahead and swirl those colors together. I'm just kind of going back and forth here. I think this one looks so cool and you could do so much with this. Um, I got this embossing fuller so long ago and like I said, I just haven't used it. Okay, so I have this CD case and I never use these and I don't know for sure if this is what I'm gonna do, but I was kind of thinking about sticking it in here and like I said, using this as a pocket, but I kind of want to see I'm almost wanting the circle. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this down just a bit here. I kind of want the circle to be open so that you can kind of feel the texture. I don't know. I was going to just make this into a pocket and you very well could just go ahead and do that by itself. But 
I happened to see this CD case and thought it would be perfect to use. Okay, so, whoops, that does look really cool, but like I said, I think it's gonna look even better if we cut this plastic out, so I'm just gonna carefully kind of pull that out. So now that I took the plastic out, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of ink up the edges because I think that's gonna tie everything together. Now, I'm just gonna do kind of the base idea, but you could really do so much more. And again, if you don't have a CD case, um, you can, you could cut out, you know, a piece of paper with a cutout, or you could just use this as a pocket and that's going to look really cool and something just a little bit different than, you know, flat paper. So we're going to just finish this up here. Now to attach, I'm going to actually just use some double-sided tape because I think that's going to make it really easy since we're putting this inside the pocket. I'm just going to use, I got ink on there. Go like so. I'm going to put it on all four sides and I'll carefully slip it into the pocket. So there we go. There is our little 3D looking folder. And the fun thing about this, if you put colorful things in your pocket, you know, you're going to be able to kind of see it through. Um, and you can even decorate this even more to add some flair. But we're going to stop right there and we're going to move on to the next. So, you know, I mentioned um, a tag and you could also make journaling cards. Um, that's another really fun way to use your embossing folders, but I'm just going to show you one more way to kind of use these as more of a decorational aspect. And I'm going to use this one that I haven't used yet. And we're going to make just kind of like a little collage, um, pocket. So I'm just going to take some coffee dyed paper, just kind of rip some off here and the fun thing is you can also um, spray, if you have different like ink sprays, you can spray those in here, we'll do that. So I'm gonna take my Distress Oxide Spray in Mermaid Lagoon and just kind of lightly spray. And then I'm also gonna take my Dilutions Mica Spray because it's really sparkly. I'm hoping this works. Just gonna place our paper right down like so. And then we're going to run it through our die cutting machine. And let's go ahead and see what we've got. That is pretty cool. So then what I would do is I would let this dry completely and then I would ink over with another color. Okay, so I didn't want to wait for that other one to dry, so I just ran through another piece of coffee dyed paper, and I'm just going to ink over this real quick leg, and then we're going to use this piece in like a little collage, uh, I guess, pocket in my journal. So just do this kind of quick. That one is really cool. I like that one. Okay. I always like to use a couple colors. I don't know why. And you're going to see how cool the gold gilding looks as we get into the journal. So I'm just going to take my personal journal real quick here. Just open to an area. It's a blank spot. I've got to have a blank spot. Here we go. And so I'm actually going to kind of rip around. I just realized I'm zoomed in. I'm so sorry, guys. So, like I said, I want to make this kind of a collage. Um, oh. Okay. So I think I'm going to, I'm just grabbing for a few things, guys. Um, I have this little butterfly here. And... Here we go, my phone folder. I'm just going to add this. I just have like my little scrap bin next to me. It's not scraps, but it's like die cuts and little bits and pieces and things that I want to use up. So that looks really cool. Um, let's see, I don't know. I want to add like... Um, I'm just going to take a little piece of this and you are my amazing, it says. 
trying to make like a little collage kind of thing. I'm not sure. I have this little label. So I'm just making like a little layered embellishment, I guess you could call it. We'll go like that and we'll use this. I literally just kind of grabbed all of those things super duper fast. And it's gonna... I mean, this is just kind of a quick idea, like I said. So you can either just glue this down as a um, an actual, you know, collage piece. But I think I'm going, I always like my things to be kind of like more functional. And I'm just going to glue around the edges like so, so that it's like a tuck spot. But it has some dimension and there we go. And then, you know, you can add in something, a tag or something like that. Okay, now let's get to the journal. And I almost forgot that I wanted to mention that embossing vintage or even any type of book page is another really fun way to use embossing folders. And I think, again, this would create just a fun pocket or really any type of project that you're going to use. But look how cool that looks with a book page. So I have a piece of paper that's five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And basically, um, I chose that size because this can fit my embossing folder on each side. So if that makes sense, I'm going to go ahead and emboss and make sure that I have the right side going up. And I'm gonna just run this through my um, die cutting machine on each side, if that makes sense. And then I'll be right back. Once you ran it through once, you're gonna go ahead and just move this folder down to get the other side so essentially you'll have your your whole piece um embossed here okay so i kind of missed a piece right here but that's okay we're just going to go with it and we are going to start off by using the vintage photo distress oxide any brown is really going to work well for this and i'm going to just start out by going over and i'm kind of like pouncing it if that makes sense just trying to mostly go um, along the embossed raised areas. You do want there to be some brown in the background as well, but you just want majority of the pressure to be touching, you know, the top embossed areas. And I'm going to be back. Now, if you don't have the, like I said, if you don't have the gilding um, polish or some type of a metallic paint, you can just spend more time on using like a brown ink or just experimenting, finding another maybe color or something that you want to add to it. Now the center, that's okay because we're gonna cover that um, with something as you will see. Okay, so now that we have that done, I'm actually going to start by taking the gilding polish and this part is kind of messy, but I just use a finger and I make sure that I don't have too much, but now I'm just gonna basically bring in, guys, or I'll try to bring in a bit there. I'm gonna take the finger and just lightly go over, again, the raised areas. And for this part, I don't do all of the embossed areas. I like the gold to be kind of random where I put it, but you can, do this all over or in certain areas. It also looks really pretty just on the edges, so. So then I'm gonna do the back too. And you can get kind of messy with it. And it, in my opinion, it still looks really good. Okay, so then once you're done with this, I'm just gonna go kind of messy again. This is not my final one. Um, so make sure to put the lid back on and then I'm going to again take my brown and now I'm going to try it. Now that I have the gold where I want it, I'm going to try and get more brown in the background in certain places, just kind of random, but, but I do want to make sure that majority of the cover has some color to it. Okay. Now I want to round these edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then I'm going to take the gold once more 
and I'm gonna have gold on the edges and I'm I'm gonna do this somewhat messy as well and just kind of go all around the edges like so oh even if you had like a metallic um, ink that would totally work here okay so now um, you can decide if you want to cover the inside of this. Um, again, if you're using this for a journal cover, you might want it to be more um, sturdy. So you can basically just cover the inside or you can leave it because it is really pretty like that as well. So I went ahead and covered mine already. So you can see that I already did that on this one. I wanted to let it dry. So I just used some scrapbook paper and glued it in. Now this one, you can see that I have some fabric and I just thought that that looked kind of fun, kind of like a binding little area. And it also adds a little bit more durability. So what I did for that, I just took some scrap muslin and I simply glued it along the center. Again, I'm not going to do that right here just because I wanted this one to be dry and ready for us, but you could just, this isn't straight, but you would have a straight piece and just glue it on. And then I let mine dry flat for like about an hour. So now we're going to set this one aside just because I wanted this one to be dry and ready to go. So now your journal cover is essentially ready and I am going to be using some coffee dyed paper and I already dyed this paper. Um, I did film this, so that video should be up, but I'm going to take about five pieces, I think. Let's see. I'm just kind of testing it out to see. Now we'll do a little bit more. So I'm just going to do one signature. This is going to be a really, really simple little journal. Six, I think we'll do seven. So as you could see, I am placing these inside one another. So you basically end up with one like little booklet of papers. Okay. Um, so I have seven pieces here and these are also five and a half by eight and a half inches. These I'm going to have to trim, but um, maybe they were, no, they must've been, I don't remember. They're longer, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and trim all these edges. Now I want to rip them actually, cause I want that raw edge. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm not going to do this all on camera, but I'm going to go through and I need to cut off about like half an inch. So I'm going to figure out where that is and I'm going to simply tear it off like so. I'm going to do that to all of these and I'll be right back. Little tip if you are wanting to rip your pages, um, the edges, I kind of fold it over my metal ruler and then it's really, really easy to tear. And you can do quite a few. I could do like four at a time, honestly. And it's not always perfect, but that's the look I'm kind of going for. So again, I'm going to place these back inside one another. Just so we have one booklet and I may even round these corners, but I'm going to decide. Just put these all back together. Okay, guys. Now I wanted to point out really quick. You might notice that some of the pages stick out and I have a lot of people asking me what the heck's going wrong when they have their, the middle of the signature pages sticking out. That's just a normal thing. I always leave it. If it bothers you though, you can trim your pages once you have them all in a signature, but that's just a natural thing that's going to happen because the center is up higher than, you know, the outer page. So I just wanted to point that out really quick, but now I'm going to like very, very quickly bind this together and I'm just going to make sure everything fits in here. Nice. You can use some clips to hold everything together. Um, like if you wanted to use a paper clip that would help, but I'm actually not even going to, cause I'm just going to do it so quick. I'm making sure that the center and everything is meeting up together and I'm going to take my all. You can use any type of a punching thing or like a, um, a thumbtack or anything like that. And I'm just simply going to just guess where the center is, poke through all the way. So you see, I'm going to do one there and then just one towards the bottom and one towards the top. Now, again, if you're worried about these pages moving around, you very well may want to have some paper clips to hold everything together. I've just done this so many times that I can't even be bothered to do that. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to take, I have some embossing floss here and I just threaded a needle and I'm just going to start by going through the center. I'm going to pull it through, but leave a little tail. I'm going to go up to the top now and go through 
there. Again, this is going to be much easier if you actually held everything together with some paper clips, but we're gonna go through the top here and we're gonna go down to the bottom and we're gonna go back into the center hole. And then you want to make sure that one of your ends is on this side of the center and one is on this side. I hope that makes sense. And then we're gonna go ahead and just tie this nice and tight. I'm gonna do a double knot. You can do so many things to spruce up these books. Um, you can leave this a little bit long and add some beads or some kind of a charm. That's always really pretty. Um, you can, if you are bothered by the pages coming out on the side, um, you can always, instead of trimming them down, you can use like lace or some kind of trim like that just to make the um, page or sorry, the cover a little bit longer. Um, you can use some ribbon to go around and tie. But for me, I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple for now. And I think this would be a really, really fun, nice little Mother Day's gift. Um, something that, you know, they can toss in their purse or write down memories or do memory keeping. And honestly, it's such a simple little journal. So, um, and I just love the embossing on this one. So I do hope that you guys liked this journal and the other videos, or sorry, the other ideas in this video. And thanks again to Elizabeth for requesting this video. And if you guys have any questions about my Patreon club, you can check it, the link down below. And please don't forget to give us a like if you made it this far and you liked this video. And guys, I will see you in the next video. Look at all this goodness here. I'll see you guys later. Bye.